Hello there, and you're very welcome to Prime Time. Well, it's back in full flow, the issue that will not go away, water charges. Following recommendations from the Oireachtas Committee on water charges, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil are locked in disagreement over how to proceed. In a moment, that's what we'll be debating here in our studio. First, though, here's this report on the most recent developments in relation to the water issue from Conor Wilson. Product of a movement that has overseen three years of protests, the birth and death of political careers, and the defining challenge faced by this government. Water charges scrapped, no new water meters, and refunds for anybody who already paid. The report from the Oireachtas Water Committee is in effect the coroner's report for a water charges system that has been clinically dead since last year's general election. Although the vote on the final report has been postponed until next Tuesday, its recommendations will be seen as a resounding victory for the anti-charges movement, while the system's champions issue stark warnings on what they see as the inevitable consequences. It just shows that the members of the committee, and indeed the body politic at large in, in a majority, I want working people, people who go out every day, the men and women who are looking at this programme, uh, to pay through their taxes. Uh, and to pay for everybody else. So working people are getting screwed. Working people are going to pay for everything once again. And those who use and those who waste will get away scot-free. If you look at the change of a whole number of parties' positions, it's come about because we had a mass movement. Uh, hundreds of thousands on the streets, communities organised, and centrally mass non-payment. And there's a very important lesson for everybody to learn, which is that movements can work. Governments can be defeated. Right-wing policies can be overturned. Implementing the committee's recommendations presents multiple problems for government. Funding water services through general taxation will have major consequences for future spending. And then there's the European problem. With the committee setting such a high bar on what qualifies as wasting water, could any resulting legislation bring us in line with the EU's polluter pays principle? The committee sets the average water consumption at 133 litres per person per day and recommends that the threshold for wasteful or abusive usage be set at 1.7 times that amount, or 226 litres per person per day. That's more than enough for every person in every household to have a bath or shower every day, flush the toilet ten times and run a cycle on both the dishwasher and washing machine. It's not yet known what sort of penalties, if any, will be imposed on people who exceed this threshold. I can guarantee you what has been proposed is absolutely illegal and will result in massive fines that the taxpayer will have to pay. We are not going to meet our commitments from Europe. We're not going to meet the polluter pays principle, the cost recovery principle. And this joke of an idea that in some way you can measure waste without having full uh, metering is also uh, crazy stuff. There's been no legal advice presented to say that um, what the committee is proposing is against the Water Framework Directive. So I think this is just a, it's a fig leaf that the government are using to hide behind in order to avoid making their actual political arguments. Look, they're for water charges, we're against water charges, that's fine. They've lost that political argument with the people and they should just accept it instead of hiding behind the threat of massive fines, which I just simply don't believe are going to happen. Fine Gael were forced into retreat on water charges immediately after last year's election and have been fighting a rearguard action ever since. Faced with a situation where the recommendations are supported by the majority of politicians both in the Dáil and on the Water Committee, the party may soon find their backs against the wall. It's unclear at this point quite how they will fight their way out and keep the government intact. Connor Wilson reporting there. Well, I'm now joined in our studio by Professor Gavin Barrett. You're Jean Monnet, Professor of Constitutional, European and Economic Law in UCD. So you will know and be able to answer these questions. In terms of what people are speculating about millions of fines, what is the situation? Um, well, the fines that are capable of being imposed by the European Court of Justice um, uh, vary with the size of the state. Uh, the, the key point is that they create an incentive to bring illegalities to an end. Now, Ireland actually has been fined uh, under these rules before. We've had to pay both what are called lump sum payments and penalty payments before. And the last time a penalty payment, which is levied by the European Court of Justice on a daily basis on the offending mem member state, uh, the last time they were imposed, uh, Ireland had to pay one of about €12,000 uh, a day. 
Now that may not sound like very much, but if you add it up, uh, in one year that would come to about 4.4 million. And it depends on the GDP, the income uh, of, of the country. So Ireland is a more prosperous country now. So uh, you could imagine that the size of that fine could be increased and could end up, we'll say, closer to 10 million euro a year uh, than, than 5 million a year. And we could have to pay a lump sum uh, as well. The last time one of those was, was imposed, uh, Ireland had to pay 1.5 million and was considered to have uh, gotten off quite lightly at that. Isn't it true, though, that there is a discretion involved here? They can use their discretion. Uh, the European Commission are responsible for prosecuting the member state and then for looking uh, for the lump sum uh, uh, and or penalty payment after that. So they do have a near total discretion as to whether to prosecute um, Ireland in that regard. But once it actually goes before the court, then matters take on pretty much a life of their own. So you could imagine that the, the lump sum and penalty payment, if they do decide to prosecute Ireland uh, um, um, uh, and to seek um, uh, that, that payment afterwards, uh, will indeed be levied. Uh, but it's up to the, the, the Commission to decide whether to actually do that. But I would have to say in environmental cases, they do tend to do it. They've been quite diligent because there's a lot of, um, um, uh, of, of disobedience to European uh, environmental law. Uh, so for quite some time, they've made it quite clear that particularly in relation to big breaches, they will prosecute. So I would expect if Ireland uh, violates this, that we will find ourselves in front of the court um, in due course. Would they be nervous, do you think, Professor, about maybe ruling against the de democratic wishes of the Irish public who clearly are not in love with water charges, imposing their rule on the Irish people? Well, it might make the Commission hesitate a little bit before actually bringing the prosecution, but once the prosecution would be brought before the European Court of Justice, they will not have regard to the political acceptability or otherwise um, uh, of the, the matter in question. It's a question of law, uh, and it is no defence to a prosecution um, under um, uh, Article 258 uh, of, the, of the, the treaty, um, uh, merely that the um, uh, point in question is not the point of law, uh, obedience to to the, the, the point of law uh, is politically un unpopular. And of course it's very confusing for people because there's as many I suppose legal opinions as there are people and you yes. hear you know oh no there won't be fines. I mean what do you say to people saying no 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 there won't be fines all will be well. Um, well, I mean, it's impossible to, pre to predict the future. Uh, the, the Commission do ultimately have a discretion uh, in, in, in that regard. But going by past performance, uh, they will prosecute uh, and the fines they can levy are well capable of hurting. OK, Gambar, thank you very much for coming in tonight. Um, John Lahart from Fianna Fáil, you heard there, it's an independent view expressed by a professor of constitutional European and economic law. He says we could be looking at extremely high fines. Well, Miriam, the European Union, the European Commission, uh, can't fine us for a report. Um, and this is just a report. It's a report that uh, uh, has been drafted and is almost a completion by the, uh, the Oireachtas Committee, the Oireachtas Water Committee. In fact, I doubt if the European Commission um, has a huge interest in the report at report stage. I think where the European Commission uh, becomes interested is when the report goes into the dog. The report clearly uh, indicates where we're going, though, John Lahart. No, but you see, uh, the point, I suppose we have had a lot of advice in it, but the point I simply want to make, because we're stuck at report stage, and this is what has caused all the controversy over the last few days, um, the EU Commission will have no interest in our report. It will probably be interested in the report when it goes to the Dáil, whether legislation is passed and what the outcome of They'd that report stage They'd be interested if you the breach the water yeah, directive the report, of their EU. Yeah, but the report isn't a legal document, it's a report. Now, that, the, the whole part of the process, Miriam, and I think this is what's frustrating us, is that the Supply and Confidence Agreement, uh, which was entered into, which was negotiated by Leo and negotiated by Simon, uh, gave a commitment that the report from the, uh, the Oireachtas uh, Committee would go back to the Dáil that it would be debated and we're open, we're open to discussing uh, the, the report in the Dáil but it is not a legal document, it is not legislation and it is not But it could law. lead to legislation. But, but that's a completely, you know, that's a, that's a big leap uh, from, from, from being a report. When you look at the Fianna Fáil position in relation to this, it yeah. is actually truly ludicrous. In Brian Cowan's government back in 2010 was going to introduce water charges of approximately 500 euro per household. Mm. How have you not got to the position now where you don't believe in water charges at all? No, that's not true. And I mean, well, I would have been, no, <clears> I would have been, uh, as many people would have been, an advocate of water metering. I would have been enthusiastic about it, actually, originally, would have been enthusiastic about the potential of Irish water to replicate the foundation and the establishment Until of the Until Paul ESB. Murphy and Sinn Fein um, spared you, basically, no, as Leo Varadkar suggested. No, what I would say, well, look, 
Leo made a couple of comments today and he actually made a, a, a comment about Sean Lamass and all I'd say about that is this because I know there's Fianna Fáil people who would expect me to reply on that but I'll, I'll resist the temptation uh, I suppose to go mad on it but just to say well, What this, about Paul Murphy Sean and Sinn Féin in Sean your Lamass, position? Sean Lamass was a man of his word and when he made an agreement he kept an agreement. We entered into an agreement with uh, Fine Gael a year ago. We actually, Miriam, we conceded on Irish water, the utility, we made a huge concession. That was a commitment we had given to the electorate. Now, uh, Simon Coveney okay. and Leo Varadkar uh, signed that agreement, committed to it. Michal Martin committed to it, and other honourable people in Fianna Fáil, like Jim O'Callaghan and Michael McGrath, who were negotiating. All we're asking is that, uh, as in the, in the spirit of, of someone like Sean Lamass, that Fine Gael would honour the okay, supply and confidence agreement that we entered into with them. Caitlin, I suppose let's nail down this question of whether or not uh, you are going to break this confidence and supply agreement. We have recommendations of the Oireachtas Committee on Water and the agreement says that the Oireachtas has to vote on that within the next month. It does say that both parties can obviously take differing positions on it, but the next line is crystal clear. It says the government will facilitate the passage of legislation, the implementation of the recommendations in relation to domestic water charging supported by the Oireachtas. So are you going to facilitate the passage of legislation implementing those recommendations? I think it would, you couldn't expect any minister in a government to knowingly bring forth legislation that they knew not, knew not to be right. So, I mean, what we were tasked with was, we were tasked as a committee to... But you specifically agreed to support this, even if abolition was part of it. You specifically agreed to facilitate the passage of that legislation. We're not at that stage yet, Miriam. We are today adjourned until next Tuesday. I am hoping that next Tuesday we will come to a resolution on this based on the illegal advice that may emerge over the weekend. And obviously in light of Professor Barrett's comments, I think which are very pertinent here tonight, um, we're still looking at solutions. I don't think we should be going down the nuclear route on this yet. But I'm just we, reading it. I know it sounds I know, very I know, legal. I know, but, but if you're but not going to facilitate the legislation, you are breaking the agreement. Yeah, we, can, we, can, we can try and predict the chain of events that will happen, but I don't think that's going to serve any purpose here. We were tasked as a committee, and we all worked very hard on that committee, mm -hmm. and we dealt with a, a lot of information, and some of us, like myself, knew very little about water entering it, um, and, and we, we informed ourselves. So we were tasked with you know, sorting this out, provide for the future funding of domestic water service in Ireland whilst complying with the Water Framework Directive, but ultimately, what we need to do is address the fact that we have a dreadful water infrastructure and that we're also and I hear that our case, But I suppose tonight we're discussing this confidence and supply agreement. It's like the breakdown of a marriage here between Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. But just on the basis of what is written in the agreement, if you don't facilitate the passage of legislation as agreed, you are breaking the agreement. Well, we can go down that route of trying to predict what will happen over the weekend and on Tuesday morning and Wednesday and all of that. We can do that. But I don't think that serves any purpose here tonight. I mean, anybody can work out that we cannot expect <clears throat> and I cannot expect Minister mm -hmm. Coveney to put forth legislation that he knows is not right. But he shouldn't how have signed we... that and put it but into how the would you expect? supply I mean, agreement. How, how could we have ever predicted but that Fianna Fáil would get into contract. bed with okay. the hard with, left with, with and Sinn Féin on Can this issue to serve mm -hmm. and to, to service? Commitments, and you alluded to it there, you rolled back on the utility because you promised people you would abolish Irish water. Okay, bring John and you've rolled, back, in there. you've rolled back on that and you have rolled back on so many things to try and, serve. and Fianna Fáil on this, is, it must be very well, difficult to John here tonight because you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. You're talking about the rural side of your mouth and the urban side okay, of your mouth. John and this is yeah, anti-rural um, Ireland, what you have done. Well, I don't want to, to escalate it, OK, but I think people should be aware. Um, the report is drafted and it looks like Fine Gael are going to reject that report, OK? They haven't been supportive of it. But let's look at what they're rejecting in rejecting that report because people are lost on this uh, out there. The public is lost. They're lost at your position, Absolutely. too. You've but done I don't blame fast no, but we've actually, no, but we've come up with the report is there, the draft report is there. So Fine Gael is going to reject that report, which means it will ref, uh, reject the abolition of uh, charges. It will reject the idea of uh, those who waste water being penalised. It will reject the idea of refunding those who paid. Critically, it will ref, uh, reject uh, the idea of giving equal treatment to group water scheme users, 
uh, private water schemes and rural dwellers but to put them on equal But you were going to bring them water charges for 500 no. euro a year not so long ago. Miriam, we have moved. But that's just the right, real, moved, reality. We have moved a million miles from that. They're also rejecting uh, independent legal advice oh that, we were, that we were given. So all I'm going to say is this. Let's, I'm asking Kate to go back to her colleagues and say, look, support the, the report. Get it into the doll. We can discuss it in the doll. The doll the full 150 okay, ATDs can, we can discuss it then. This is that a report, we it's not a legal document. Enormous resources were poured into that committee where we, we, we learned so much. And now, John, you are misleading people here by saying that by rejecting the report, obviously by rejecting the report. But, uh, these the are recommendations but, of the report and you're but, going to reject this report. But, and these are all the, the recommendations no, John, John, that you are, the you majority are of members of the... You knowingly misleading the public here. But, but it's in you black and white in the, in the, the, the draft public. report. And this is... Uh, but aren't you misleading people as well, Kate O'Connell, by saying you're not breaking the supply and confidence agreement when you simply are? We, we're not even at that stage, Miriam, yet. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to find a solution. And we've worked very well with Fianna Fáil until, obviously, something went array in, in, in Fianna Fáil over the weekend and came back with, with uh, some sort of notion... How long is this marriage going to last? Oh, I, can, I obviously can't predict that. Not but very if, long. But if you have a situation where a party that... I have the height of respect for many people within Fianna Fáil, but, I mean, I really was shocked. I was shocked at the interaction between the hard left and Fianna Fáil from Tuesday morning and how somehow they all happened to move on the same side. Final and it was Fianna, Fianna, Fáil, Fianna Gael and the, Green, uh, and the Greens and Labour. We, we, we worked together how and, and voted together on many issues. Last? Well, look, you know... There's no trust. We're honourable, it's dysfunctional. We're honourable people. We signed an agreement. Uh, we've kept our side of that supply and confidence agreement. We've stuck by the government through a lot of thick and some thin and all we're asking is that uh, they act as Sean Lamas would have all done. He's and is that, all he's asking uh, that, that, that you put a that, minister okay. of our Bradford, government in a John position Simon to bring in wrong, incorrect legislation. Well, thank Thanks, you very Mary. much for coming in tonight.